It's going to be a great day today. The uh, temperature is going to be in the balmy uh, high 50s, lower 60s, uh, although there are two storm fronts coming for the whole uh, east coast of the United States. So we're, we know that we're going to enjoy the day now and uh, embrace ourselves for what has to come. Book of Revelation. Uh, one of the things I want to do now is backtrack just a little bit because you see each of the seven letters uh, is written and the identity of the one writing or dictating what is to be written is clearly indicated and it shows the attributes and the character of God. In the book to Ephesus it says holds the seven stars, remember those are the angels of the churches, in his right hand and walks among the lampstands that we remember was clearly told to us in the scripture as being the churches. I think it's important for us to remember that the church is God's instrument. Uh, he established it and he says even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And he says in Matthew, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. My friends, if you belong to a local church, you belong to God's institution. And uh, maybe you need to find the right one that preaches the word of God. But nevertheless, the church is God's institution. And uh, it is his tool in this world that we live in. And he's always with us, always with us, not only individually, but as in our churches. So the church at Smyrna, he says he's the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who will bring final judgment. Uh, he is the one that will live out throughout eternity with us. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. He also identifies himself there as the one that was dead, but is now alive. Uh, that's the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Very clearly, uh, he's a risen Savior. We serve a risen Savior, the one that has power over death. To the church at Pergamum, uh, he says he's the sharp two-edged sword. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, we see that as representing the Word of God. And the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. John 1, 1 and 14, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was... God and the word that dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So we see the word of God sharper than any two-edged sword. You always use the word of God. I was uh, always uh, impressed with how the word of God cuts through. And to the letter of the church at Thyatira, he is seen as the son of God. In Luke chapter 1 verse 32, uh, when uh, the announcement of his birth was there, uh, it says that he would be the Son of God and he would have eyes like a flame. In Daniel 10 6 we see eyes like a flame and then we see the feet like burnished bronze. We know that symboli symbol symbolically in the scriptures that strength and judgment so we see a son of God with eyes like a flame and one that can bring strength and judgment to the church at Sardis, uh, the seven spirits, it says. That's the fullness of God. Now, be careful because if you do a concordant study of uh, seven spirits, you'll find there's also seven evil spirits. Uh, that is the completeness of evil. And here we see the completeness of God. And uh, if you look again in Revelation chapter 4, you'll see the Spirit, the complete Spirit of God present there. And it says the seven stars, again, we're reminded that he's got the angels of the church watching over us and uh, that he's always with us as a church. To so the church at Philadelphia, uh, who is holy and true. Now, if you were ever to find a verse uh, that had a term that was used over and over again, holy and true is absolutely it. In Isaiah 40, verse 25, in Habakkuk 3, 3, and uh, also in Mark chapter 1, verse 24, and in John chapter 6, uh, you find this holy and true. Now, holy doesn't describe God, nor does true describe God. God describes holy, and God describes true. Uh, he is the epitome. He is the term holy. He is the term true, not just that he contains holiness or contains truth, but he is holy. He is true. And it says the keys of David, remember the keys that he has are the ones that are opened to the bottomless pit, the ones that uh, will seal 
heaven and hell. Uh, he has the keys. It's not Satan that has the keys. He has the keys. And so we see he has the keys of David. Finally, to Laodicea, it says he is the amen, so be it. He is the faithful and uh, he is the true witness. Uh, there is no one like him. He is beginning and the end. And so we see again in Isaiah 22, verse 15 and following, that he has the keys. We see that he is the beginning and the end. We see that he was in the beginning and he always will be. The attributes and the character of God revealed in his introduction to each of the seven letters to the seven churches. What a God. What a creator. What a savior. He loves his church, and he loves the people of his church, and he is holy and true. Why not worship him a few minutes today, thanking him for who he is? That's your thought for the day. God bless you, and have a great day.